Hi everyone, today I'm gonna go through uh, everything I used uh, to build a sawmill. Uh, I have many people asking what parts I use, uh, where did I take the wheels, size of engine, and so I'm gonna try to answer most of the questions I get on, on YouTube in this video. So the sawmill I built uh, for about two, two and a half weeks. Uh, so all the metal I use for the mill is uh, sourced from the scrapyard. Also some of the parts that I use are coming from the scrapyard, such as these bearings, they're all coming from the scrapyard. And generally I'm happy with the mill. It's doing a great job. As you can see, it cuts nice and straight. It cuts wide size wood up to one meter in width. It's quite wide actually. The mill, the length of the bed is six and a half meters. And the length of the wood I can cut is five and a half meters, almost six. So I can fit logs up to five and a half, six meters on the mill. Right, so first of all, the wheels. I get most questions about the wheels. The wheels are not great. Uh, they're aluminum wheels, not, not so straight, not so perfect, uh, but they do the job at this point. Problem in future, I'm gonna replace them with uh, proper sawmill wheels, but this is what I have at this time. So I'm using these are 23 inch. Let me just have a quick look. <coughs> Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's about 23 inch in diameter the wheels and if I'm not wrong they're handmade you can see they're aluminium uh, casted wheels they're very rough but they're balanced so they do decent job at this time I'm not gonna move that bearing from there at the moment but it comes to about 40 what's that 40 inches I don't know if you can see it moves to about 40 inches or around one meter in width which is quite wide that was one of the main reasons I constructed the saw sawmill myself right so that's for the wheels uh, aluminium wheels very cheap wheels they costed me around uh, $50 for both, for the set, $50, not a bad price for these. They did not come assembled with anything, only the wheels, so I had the, all the parts. So these shafts uh, are handmade to fit them, as well as all these fittings on the wheels same on the other side I got all these handmade to fit for these wheels which was quite hard to make and that's new and it's quite expensive actually that cost me around $70 just that bit uh, the belt I also got online you can see that belt tensioner uh, I made myself Again, using things, that's all scrapyard stuff here. So, I made it so I can flip it upside down. You can see that I had it down, there is no even paint behind it. I had it down, I turn it upside down now to see how it's gonna work with. It applies more tension on the belt and it keeps it more uh, tight. So, I just had it today upside down just to see how it goes and I think I'm gonna leave it that way 
I think there is not there is less play in the belt as it runs like this. What else the the length of the blade is five five point one meters is quite long five point one meters uh, I also got these online I got two but I haven't used the other one yet as this one is still quite sharp I haven't used it much uh, blade guides uh, I know they are funny looking but they do the job for now I did not have the chance to get proper blade guides and I just decided to uh, make these bearing guides you can see I have a, a wide bearing on the top pushing the belt uh, pushing the blade down uh, and keeping it straight for not like going up or down and I have a smaller bearing on the back currently not touching the blade but as we cut if it needs to it just keeps that blade in place for not slipping with lots of adjustments for that it can go up and down left and right uh, uh, it can also tilt uh, forwards and backwards basically all the adjustments you need on the blade guides I have them it's just a weird looking blade guide but it does the job same on this side for the bearings I've used simple bearings nothing special a uh, set of two on each side holding the shaft for the wheels also I I mounted some bolts on both sides just to adjust the direction of the wheel uh, that goes on on the front too you can see that allows me to move the wheel uh, in each direction like left and right so to be aligned with the other wheel properly when I need to fix the blade tracking so that comes quite handy it's not hard to make at all just weld some thick metal plates on the sides like I got metal plate on this side metal plate on that side just drill uh, run a thread and get some bolts on both sides that's basically quite simple to make these bushings are from uh, just plas plastic bushings I think I saw these uh, online on uh, I'm not really sure was it a green wood sawmills have similar plastic bushings and I like the idea of it so I made my own plastic bushings uh, for the sliders and they work quite well I'm so happy with this there is no play whatsoever uh, you can see it goes quite tight there is no gaps anywhere around the, the, gap, the gap is like less than a uh, less than a millimeter uh, between the the slider <coughs> and the metal bar so that runs quite quite smoothly uh, what else we have here I've made these attachments on both sides so I can uh, adjust and level basically the platform um, I can just adjust it from here and it's all attached with uh, metal ropes up and that allows me to level it quite easily uh, the engine I use is total engine is uh, what does it say total industrial 13 horsepower it's um, it's quite good engine I'm happy so far I've used it for uh, only a couple of times but it starts straight forward it runs smooth and it's quite powerful I never had any issues with it 
13 horsepower it just cuts through uh, the wood quite easily uh, it's gasoline engine it's all manual uh, it's manual start as you can see also I have that battery cover here that's a car battery that I'm using to power the winch I got it covered with a plastic bag at all times just in case it starts raining I'm just going to cover that later okay it's a very simple construction there is not much of an engineering going through and there is a bottle jack car jack that I'm using for uh, tightening the blade for uh, blade tension is is doing a decent job but uh, it's letting go uh, slightly so I have made these uh, thre threaded uh, inserts with um, bolts just so I can tight the part of uh, that extension arm I can tight it in in here with these bolts I got it on both sides so that don't let go even if the <coughs> even if the car jack lets go that's gonna keep it nice and tight while I work so that's just a, a good backup to have uh, I got the same adjustments on this side with the bolts for the alignment of the wheels you can see the wheels are aligned quite quite good at the moment uh, that's the the arm that uh, I made for the adjusting blade guide on one side that moves back and forth goes all the way to the end and allows me to do the wider cuts uh, that's also quite simple just a square pipe running in another square pipe and I got some uh, bolts to keep it tight in place to don't move while I'm working and that slides the whole thing slides on a v-shaped bearings that I fit in this square pipes profile and it slides on a uh, v-shape profile that is turned upside down and welded to the the platform all the way to the end on both sides of the platform I got these stoppers welded just in case there is a strong wind or I like push it too fast or for whatever reason just to have it it's a good thing to have uh, on the front I mounted a, a trailer wheel so when I, whenever I need to move it it's easier to move with the trailer wheel also I have these uh, car wheels mounted on that side is relatively easy to to move it uh, whenever I, wherever I need it okay what else you can see it's quite easy to to move it up and down with the remote it's way easier than using the winch the manual winch Uh, the only problem with this is uh, that it's going quite fast up and down and it does the job for a moment but I'm not totally happy with it and I'm thinking to fit, to fit some sort of uh, uh, gear on the top there so to slow it down uh, as I said it does the job as it is it's not like a necessity to do it but for more precise cuttings uh, ideally I'm gonna fit one if I decide so in future 
right here uh, I have these arms that I made very simple again just welded some nuts and got these bolts just to tighten the the arms you know everyone knows how to do these that's simple uh, these jacks I used to to level the platform these I couldn't find uh, anywhere to buy so I had to build them myself these are quite quite simple to build anyway so just two pieces of pipe with a thread and some nuts easy to adjust and level everything these are quite useful but I need to mount another set on the front so I'm just moving these back and forth when I need them but I'll just make another set of these uh, overall I'm very happy with the mill I've done quite some cutting so far uh, it's not 100% completed yet but it's still in a test phase and that's the reason why I haven't done the whole uh, enclosure on the blades just because I'm still keeping an eye on it and until I'm completely happy with the whole setup I'm not gonna put that uh, blade guards and enclosure I'm working slowly and carefully I'm keeping an eye on everything as I go uh, I stop all the time when I hear something weird on or feel that the machine is not working properly I stop I check everything so so far I've cut quite a lot and I did not have any issues with it but yeah in the future I'm gonna build uh, the blade guards that's uh, another thing to do but yeah that's the sawmill I built I hope you like it and I hope uh, I answer most questions that I had online uh, for the size of the of the pulleys and the length of the blade and such I use a online online calculator for so to get the the right um, blade speed on my mill it had to be calculated so that's how I choose my uh, belt pulley size uh, lubrication system quite simple I have a, a plastic um, gasoline can uh, on the top just mounted on a, a real simple like a platform that I made from profiles I got that with a like a soft plastic pipe going down one simple valve turn it on and off going all the way down to the blade very easy to operate as you can see and you can turn down the turn the water on and off easy so that's quite simple no need to overthink that there's no need for over complication uh, I think that's pretty much everything about the sawmill as I said it's quite simple build uh, there is nothing too complicated about it so the total cost of the mill it was just under two thousand dollars and that includes all the metal uh, and the engine and all the parts that they used for it around one thousand seven hundred one thousand eight hundred dollars roughly I haven't like totally calculated the exact amount but I know it's just under two thousand uh, dollars the most uh, expensive part to buy of course is the engine and the most difficult far, uh, parts to find are the wheels and with that everything else is just uh, really patience to put things together and to do a little research of course how things work so uh, for those of you who are thinking to build their own sawmill I'm gonna uh, recommend to do a little research online before getting into building your own sawmill uh, and uh, 
you know it's not an easy thing to do but it's it's a fun fun thing to do definitely i enjoyed it quite a lot the only thing i regret is not filming it but i'm gonna film the rest of the build the blade guards and the other the other upgrades i'm doing on the mill so uh from now on i'm just gonna film everything i do on you can see i got some uh quite wide boards cut today It does a great uh, job for me. I have some old walnuts here that I'm going to cut in the next couple of days. So if you want to see these cut, you can just subscribe to the channel and get a notification when I upload that video. Uh, I'm gonna slice these in slabs. I'm gonna make a couple of tables from them these are massive walnuts I don't know if you can see that's my hand here massive walnuts about 70 80 years old walnut trees this one's quite old and it's got all these holes into it I don't know if you can see it's got all these holes into it and I, I bet it's gonna look amazing when it when it's sliced so uh, you're gonna see when I upload the video and here quickly I'm gonna show you the the stuff that I got cut there is some timber that I got and some boards that I just cut today and, and just stuck up ready to dry so if you have any other questions about the sawmill just uh, put it in the comments normally I'm answering all the comments so I'm gonna try to uh, get back to you. So that's pretty much it for today with the sawmill and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like uh, the videos and what I do uh, Just to support my channel and uh, Give this video a like if you like it and I'm gonna see you in the next video